I got a feeling the room is not crowded this much tonight just to come see us, so I anticipate uh, there being one or two voices in the next case. And with that being said, I may extend the time limit to 15 to 20 minutes per side. 15 or 20. Uh, <laughs> Do you have a recommendation, Mr. Moore? Uh, the state law requires at least 10 minutes. Um, my recommendation, since we have a number of people here, is 15. All right, so I'll do that. Uh, Mr. Martin, with that being said, we will extend this case to 15 minutes. Uh, Madison will present a case on the VA 2018-05 case. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And just so the audience understands, it's 15 minutes per side once we get to the public hearing portion. That's correct. That excludes our presentation. That excludes the <laughs> budget. Thank you, sir. All right, this is a rezoning request um, by Pace, um, represented by Matt Phelps. This is to rezone 0.88 acres, and I'll start there. Um, from single family residential R15 to RM, um, start with the character area. This, of course, these maps and site plans and so forth are in your packet. Um, but the character area helps paint a story of the development patterns in the area. Um, you see in the brighter shaded yellow, um, everything along the west side of Oak Street is salvage residential. To the east, it is transitional neighborhood of the development pattern overall and is somewhat reflective in the zoning pattern where you see mostly R15 to the west of Oak and then east of Oak you have the DR10 the RPs um, and the OP property uh, like we could talk about it for work session. Aerial imagery you see the urban forest of the area, the subject property is an existing single family residence. It has about almost 2,600 square feet. The proposal is to demolish this residence and replace it with a redevelopment of townhouse-style condominium apartments consisting of eight dwelling units. Each of them is proposed as a three-bedroom, and the applicant is proposing to build these for sale, uh, to build them as rental units, which would offer them for sale. wanted to emphasize that. I know there had been some confusion on that previously. Um, survey of the property, of course, it's one parcel of the corner of Terry <coughs> Street. In your packet, there's a larger version of this site plan but you see a very nice layout showing the townhouses that back up to Oak Street um, with their own doors facing up, but all the interior access and the garages are from the interior of the site with the driveway being Terrace Boulevard, um, no separate driveways to Oak Street, um, and they oriented the buildings, uh, which are two-story buildings, toward Oak Street, further away from the single family neighborhood. Um, it shows gated access, it shows landscaping, a buffering, and even a retention pond. But keep in mind, this is a conceptual drawing. It is not an engineer drawing, although the applicant is an engineer. Um, in your packet, there are also some photos that are examples of uh, facades. This is the interior um, side where the garages and the driveways. This is from the interior of the site looking eastward. And then the view from Oak Street would look something like this where you have a row of doors and small porches along the streetscape, and you see the lack of driveways that are there. Um, floor plans, again, these are examples, uh, but showing the one-car garage that is built into the first floor of each unit, and then showing the floor plan for the three-bedroom unit. Subject property, this is the current residence, and then some of the adjacent properties, this is going uh, counterclockwise, starting with the two houses to the south, and then diagonally on the next block is some existing townhouses, which have been there for a number of years. And then also diagonally directly across the street is the pregnancy support clinic. And then coming up Oak Street, this is from right in front of the subject property, looking at the single family residence that's across Oak to the northeast. A little view looking northeastward up Oak Street, you see the single family pattern continuing. This is the house to the north on the other side of Terrace Boulevard. And then these are the houses on Terrace Boulevard that are nearby within a lot or two of the subject property. Um, in your packet, of course, is all the information we just went over, um, the standards for exercise of zoning power. Um, a lot of this discussion in the staff report um, deals with the location of the proposed development and the density that is associated with the RM development um, and how it is somewhat different than the immediately adjacent properties, at least on the west side of Oak. Um, but there is some compatibility in favor of the applicant's proposal based on zoning on the east side of Oak Street. Um, a lot of discussion is involved in this. There's, you see there's a number of people here who I think would like to speak with you. 
Um, in your packet, originally I included one letter of support, which is from the single family residence to the northeast across the street, that's Mr. Giddens. And then right before the meeting, I passed out a copy of two other letters that came to me by way of email. It's a two sided page, um, and those are letters from nearby property owners. Um, and that staff, like we talked about the work session, has had numerous phone calls and office visits. I'm um, asking about the details of this request, and those have continued right up through this afternoon. Um, and some of those folks may be in the audience here this evening. Um, staff has found the request inconsistent with our standards for exercise of zoning power, and inconsistent with the comprehensive plan based on the zoning and land use patterns, and the protection of established single-family neighborhoods, and we are recommending uh, denial of this request. I'm glad to answer any questions that you may have. Man, is this simply just eight doors? Eight. Is it eight, eight doors? dwelling units? Um, depends on how you count doors. They're showing doors facing Oak Street. I'm saying this. So it's only eight units. Eight dwelling units, and here you see eight doors facing Oak. But on the interior, I imagine there will be doors there as well, in addition to the garage, which you see like this. Just eight dwelling units. So eight dwelling units. The best way to look at it is with the site plan. And you see the eight different rectangles for dwelling units. They're in two buildings, four units per building, each building being two stories, sort of a townhouse style condominium apartment. And so if this was a strictly rental opportunity, uh, how many parking places per unit would you require? Well, it's multifamily, whether it's renter or okay. owner occupied. It is, the requirement is one parking space per bedroom is the minimum requirement. Um, since these have one car garages, that counts as one parking space. The driveway also counts as a parking space if it is large enough to meet the parking space requirement, and then extras. Um, and there's, if you add that up, each unit, of course, has the garage, the driveway space, and a parking space on the other side. The development here, as shown, is showing four additional parking spaces above minimum requirement. In other words, 12 surface parking, plus eight spaces in the garage, plus eight garages. And if they needed to add a few extra, there's a little extra room in there. Okay. Commissioners, any questions for staff? Yes, actually, I would. Commissioner Gladwell, please go ahead. Just to be clear, this request is for rezoning. This is not a planned development. Correct. correct. It is a rezoning from R15 to RM, so, multifamily residential. So the applicant is showing a plan, eight dwelling units, 0.88 acres, which means their density is nine units per acre. Correct. But theoretically, if this, so there is no criteria limiting them to this specific plan. That it's is just correct. A rezoning. So the rezoning case that we are looking at allows, or does it allow as far as density? It allows up to 18 dwelling units per acre. Okay. So really what we are reviewing today is not the site plan. What we are reviewing is the rezoning case from single family R15 to multifamily rezoning case that will allow up to 18 dwelling units per acre. Correct. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that we are not we are not looking at the site plan because this is not a PD. The site plan is there for your reference. Exactly. Um, but, but, this, but in reality, but the, I guess what I'm trying to get to is that the, the applicant is not limited just to that plan. They, if the zoning goes through and they decide to change the configuration, they have the right to do that up to 18 units. Correct, uh -huh. unless there's certain conditions of approval as part yeah. of the approved rezoning. And unlike planned development and conditional use reviews, we're limited as to the types of conditions we can place on such an approval. But yes, <coughs> you're correct. What is before you is simply a rezoning request from R15 to RM. <coughs> the development plan and all these other drawings are here as a reference. Any questions? Other questions? Um, I did, but I, I think um, Commissioner Glad will kind of clarify that. The, the screen that we had a couple of screenshots back that showed the driveways and the um, and the carports, I believe they were carports or garages, maybe one 
Okay. So this is actually interior into the property. Correct. If you look on the site plan, you see the driveway with parking going north-south through the center of the property. Right. And you see driveway that's sort of in the stipple pattern. Okay. Okay. That's these driveways right. and these garages. Now keep in mind, this is not the exact plan. This is a, an example of the style of architecture um, and massing and so forth that they were proposing. But I think very, very similar. And then similar to that, this is a, a drawing that the applicant produced themselves, showing a schematic of how the buildings would <laughs> likely look from Oak Street. And you see here, no driveways, no garages, um, just doors that they would add. It's a little different than the floor plan, but I think you could use imagination. On the ground floor, great room, there would be a, a door with a small porch facing you know, on the exterior wall toward Oak Street. Okay, being no question for staff at this time, I will open it up to anyone here wishing to speak in favor of this request can come forward at this time. Anyone wishing to speak in favor of this request? Good evening, sir. Good evening. My name is Matt Phelps, 4560 F, Balmore Drive. I, uh, I am, in fact, an applicant, as you all know, and I'd like to thank staff for <coughs> Compliment from my site plan and, and the design of it. Uh, I am going to have to respectfully disagree, though, with their analysis of the, the land use in the area and, and their recommendation for denial. Um, I'd like to start just real quick with some of what are my intentions. Um, I'll start with, you know, again, these are not rentals, as, as staff pointed out. These are to be built um, townhome style single family residences. These are in no way apartments whatsoever. I've heard that word thrown around a couple times already. These are not apartments. Uh, these are these are kind of single family residences. Um, intended for owner occupancy. Uh, I, I think there's a trend. Um, you can drive down Oak Street and see five or six, seven for rent signs along the stretch of Oak Street right now. Um, this is trending for rental. I, I would like to um, stop that trend if at all possible and reverse it. I think this is one way that we could uh, get start that effort in this neighborhood. Um, you know, being new construction, um, somewhere one hundred seventy-five to two hundred thousand dollar value, um, sell value is, is you know, what the market's demanding, and I think that is nothing but positive for this immediate uh, area. I've got two or three verbals already. If people are interested in it, should this you know, be approved uh, next week? Um, I think it gives a nice comparables for, for sale for the nearby long-term home, homeowners uh, in that neighborhood. Um, you know, again, I want to point out some of the things from the site plan. You know, privacy fence all the way around it, landscape buffers, everything per code, um, gated access. Uh, not that I pointed out, um, pointed out on the site plan. Uh, there's even an area in the, the back side of it, about 4,000 square feet, to be used anyway. The residents. The owners want to uh, park, playground area, swing set, whatever they want. Um, I wanted to give them a place for their own personal private use or some amenities um, like that. Um, there is a storm water area. Um, it will stay dry unless it rains, um, uh, but that will be taken care of in the, in the development phase and claim review phase. I do have one other letter of support uh, from a neighbor. Uh, Dr. Ben Moy and Tina Moy, uh, I'll give this to staff afterwards for it to go on to the record. Because they own the house directly uh, to the west of this site. Uh, um, I think it's probably something that <coughs> most people in this neighborhood should, should like to see happen um, as compared to, to what's there now. Um, I, I've lived, I grew up in this community, um, 37 years old. Uh, Except for three and a half years that I went off to college and came back, uh, I am a professional engineer, um, and I've been doing this for 14 years. And I did get a couple of emails from staff that forwarded to me that people were taking against it, and I thought I'd go ahead and address some of their comments uh, while I'm up here. Um, first of all, uh, there was a development about a year ago over on Georgia Avenue that was proposed, and it wasn't a good plan. I will stand here with them and, and disagree with that plan. I would not have supported it either. Um, this has been no way in comparison uh, to that whatsoever. Uh, these are, I'll again say, 
single family residences in the town, townhouse style. Um, these are not apartments. Um, Oak Street, completely different character um, than Georgia Avenue was. Georgia Avenue is in the heart of their neighborhood. Uh, this is right on the edge of it, um, looking right up against um, some office for pedestrian uses and, and, and things like that much higher traffic. Um, something else, uh, there's no infrastructure problems in this area. Water and sewer is available right next um, in front of the site. Uh, there's no stormwater problems. Um, any stormwater that does generate above well and beyond what's there now will be handled in the stormwater pond um, that I'll be engineering that whole site. Uh, that will be handled in the development review. Um, parking. Parking is taken care of with a few extra, like Seth pointed out, you know, family and friends come over for a weekend or something. Um, probably the another big one would be you know, setting a precedent for this area uh, in general. I don't believe it is. Um, it, just, it doesn't open up Georgia Avenue again for someone else to try something. Um, Oak Street is a different classified street, um, traffic-wise. We are on uh, different location relative to uh, the character of the river, not in part of it, on the boundary. But uh, one other thing I will point out, and the slide that you brought up, is this is a multi-family zoning. Um, multi-family has a bad connotation sometimes. Um, when it comes to, to this type of thing. <coughs> I will propose it myself and would be glad to, to support it of uh, putting a restriction uh, uh, condition on the zoning of eight units max. Um, I'm not going to get a zoning approved and then the next day change my mind and come in with something else. I'm not that type of person. I'm going to stick with what I propose and, and that's my work. Uh, so if y'all see fit put that uh, condition on there, I will gladly accept it. Um, but, you know, getting back to zoning, strictly zoning issues, um, I think you've got to look at zoning on Oak Street as a corridor. Both sides of the street have to work together and complement each other. Um, they're connected, you know, via access, driveways, on and off the street, utilities, water and sewer, they serve both sides of the street. And in addition, they share each other. There's no way to put a buffer or a wall or anything up there to separate these. So, in my opinion, this follows the intent of comprehensive plan. It, it's not a spot zoning. Um, it, it's not surrounded by R15. Um, like was, uh, I think I worked with Houston in the staff report. R15 is on one side. Across the street, you've got ROP, uh, which is office professional, uh, above and beyond residential use already. And then you've got the RP um, getting very, very close there between Wayne and Park. Um, the RP zoning is almost 300 feet away. That's a much more intensive use than what I propose. Um, the, in the LDR, you know, there's a section 202-6. It's, it's got a chart that talks about the relationship between these character areas. That chart right there is all they looked at. Um, RM zoning is the most intensive, um, highest residential use allowed in the established neighborhood. Anything above that, RP, you've got to go to the transitional character area. Well, that's what we have directly across the street of the uh, other side of Oak Street. Um, you know, the, uh, something I discussed with staff was, um, I don't think it was mentioned um, here tonight, but it was in the report, is RN might be more appropriate farther to the east or Patterson Street. Well, I, I want to be specific. Is that location we discussed was actually right across the street. Um, Front of Wayne Avenue, um, where it says DR10 and the RP right behind it. Um, that, that's literally across the street. So, <coughs> two to three hundred feet away. Um, would, I'm not saying they would support it, but it was discussed as a different possibility. Um, it simply doesn't work from that economic standpoint. But um, beyond that, at that point, if that position was, was all right, then, then I don't see how my site would. Uh, would be so much out of character area. And the staff even went through the trouble of giving me a, a, a breakdown, calculation of how many units I could put on a piece of property. Um, so I don't see how that site versus my site being right next to each other is, is really any different whatsoever. Um, and again, just basically closing, I'll reiterate this is not a rental apartment 
development. This is meant for ownership, um, which I think we should be encouraging more ownership in this area and maintenance and upgrade of existing properties and not going to rental. As I think we see a trend happening in Portugal here. Um, townhomes make a perfect buffer um, between what you see on one side of Oak Street versus the other. Um, other. Um, you can preserve anything back on the terrace, doors are delved, um, all the streets in there should remain exactly how they are. This is a nice um, front buffer as the RP, OP zoning started and improved over compassion. So, uh, thank you for your consideration tonight and ask for your recommendation of approval. And if you have any questions, concerns, I'll be happy to answer. A quick question. Do you decide to determine a heated area square footage of these kind of houses? How about 1,600 square feet is, is what we're looking at. The building will be 80 feet. The total width of one building will be 80 feet, um, two story. Um, I guess one other point of thing uh, there is under the existing R15 zoning, uh, that lot could be divided in half. Um, and build two 80 foot wide, two story homes. It would be exactly the same. I'm sure you wouldn't tell this. They might have to be about 10 feet farther back. I did. Uh, so. Also, to just to eat some stuff, you, have you considered your exterior skin of these units yet? What are you going to put on? On the front facing Oak Street, um, probably going to be that's in trying to indicate in my um, rudimentary uh, skill there for drawing conceptual stuff and some brick. Um, along the bottom. I wanted to go entirely front to left to try to mimic one continuous residence, but at the same time, um, there are, it, it does each have a door just for ingress, egress, you know, for various reasons. Um, so, to visually try to show one continuous unit, you know, residence, but internally, it is in the four individual units. Brick on the front. Um, some, some siding on, on the sides and, and in the rear. Um, do some various accents around the doorways and to, to try and distinguish one from the other on the internal side, things like that. Good. Commissioners? Commissioner Bradley? Matt, hey, but, but, um, staff, I also do compliments on the site plan. It's run down. But I do have a question for you. Um, how many units you could get if you keep it just as an R15 zoning. Just R15, mm -hmm. you could put it, you could divide it into two lots. Just two? Yes. If you did a planned development or um, I believe you might could squeeze in a third, but it'd be yes. more, it'd be very tough. Yeah, with the 20% bonus density, which is possible through plan development, and assuming that the 0 0.88 acres is it's, it's at least that, um, you barely get to dwelling unit number three when you do the math. Mm -hmm. um, and I, we've had several conversations with the applicant myself. Um, staff would be very supportive of a plan development in R15 zoning mm -hmm. for three dwelling units if it was designed well. Um, in other words, a triplex that looks like a house mm -hmm. with, I like the rear parking and the access and the front on Oak Street being resembling that of a single family residence, yet maintaining that single family character. Mm -hmm. But that's three dwelling units, not eight. Mm -hmm. you, said, you said triplex, are you saying there's three triplex buildings? No, no. R15, the property of 0.88 acres on R15 zoning has enough frontage and land area to subdivide into two parcels. Mm -hmm. So at any point, someone could demolish the existing residence, come back with a subdivision for two lots, and then build two homes there. Mm -hmm. um, there's a little bit of land left over, but not enough to make a third lot. Under plan development, you know that's for creative design and some flexibility with site planning and so forth. There's enough land area there with the 20% bonus density to get up to three dwelling units. In other words, about 45,000 square feet of area at the equivalent. And staff would be supportive of that as a redevelopment in R15 with a good site plan. One thing to keep in mind, particularly on this, that is a larger than normal lot for this area. So there's your basis and rationale for extra dwelling units, but in R15 minutes. Um, another map that some of you had asked part of it before, RM allows up to 18 dwelling units per acre. If you do the math, multiply that by 0.88, 
you get 15 point something, mm -hmm. which when those numbers calculations we uh, round down, so 15 dwelling units maximum will be allowed with this acreage under RN. Just follow up. So did you consider the other options that you else on that lot, and how did you actually derive, how did you come up with the eight units? What, what's, is there magic? How did you get to that? I think eight units is, is all that comfortably fits when you take into account the need for parking spaces um, and a little bit of stormwater area and, and, and the amenity area. Um, you put in the buffers, transitional buffers. Um, that's you know, you become a, it becomes a physical fit question, um, and I'm not interested in, in doing a, a apartment. I'm not trying to get as many units as I possibly get on this property. I'm trying to do something <coughs> that, that looks good. Um, I think it fits the character of what a tree um, can be, and it will slowly become. Um, but but that, that's where eight came from. But the fourth unit, I mean, and, and it works economically, because uh, obviously 15 would be better, but that's not what we have to do. That's not what we're trying to accomplish. It's not all about dollars and cents at the end of the day. Any other questions for our presenter? Matt, thank you very much. And we have about one minute left if somebody else would like to come forward and speak on behalf of this. This request this evening. My name is Greg Moore. I live at 507 Jordan Avenue. <clears throat> I've been a resident of the neighborhood for over seven years now. I'm also working with Mr. Phelps on this single family residential development. Like many of my neighbors, um, I appreciate the established neighborhood that I'm living in and the proximity to retail, work, arts, church, the university, and South Florida Medical Center. Being a real estate professional, I'm quite aware of the influence of the college rentals on the neighborhood. Due to this rental segment, over 50% of the neighborhood west of Oak Street that has been sold in the past five years has turned into college rentals. And over 64% of the properties on Oak Street between Alden and Dornto are already rentals. Um, as a real estate professional, I've also seen the wants of working professionals and empty nesters that are buyers and, and they're looking for geographical convenience, uh, high quality construction, less ongoing maintenance, the single family residences that we're offering here uh, accommodate this. It's a great opportunity for single family uh, working professionals at the university or over some of the 1,500 professionals at South Florida Medical Center to have a close um, residence to where they work. Um, and, I've, and I've had several qualified inquiries on this already. As a resident of the neighborhood, I'm invested in preserving the neighborhood. I would like to uh, I don't want to support any project that negatively impact our community. I've talked to dozens of homeowners. Some of those live in their homes. Some of them have them as rentals. And I've gotten a positive response for some single family residents in this location on Oak Street. Uh, there's a need for a variety and style of homes to allow for the current residents in the neighborhood to downsize and to stay in the neighborhood. I want to make it clear though, that there are several residents that have associated themselves that may be against this in the neighborhood, but they do not speak for over, the over 250 homeowners in the neighborhood. I ask that you consider this family residential development on its merits, and I feel that it'd be a positive for our neighborhood. Thank you. Any questions for presenters, commissioners? Thank you, sir. Okay, I will ask real brief. Does anyone else like to speak in favor of this request? Anyone else like to speak in favor of this request? There being none, at this time I will ask anyone who would like to come forward that wishes to speak against this request, come forward this time. Anyone? No. Okay. My name is Pam Rickman. My husband Barley and I dwell at 501 Georgia Avenue. We've been there for 20 years, of our 28 years in Belfaster. Um, I am representing that group of neighbors who have associated themselves as the Georgia <coughs> Neighborhood, Georgia Park Neighborhood Association, LLC. 
I appreciate the opportunity to speak this evening. I um, also want to acknowledge that indeed the developer has done significant work and that appreciate that the commission is asking good questions and appreciate the uh, input from Mr. Martin and staff who have done extensive research. Mr. Martin and his staff have considerable information sources at their disposal and they're professionally trained in this area. And they have recommended denial of this rezoning effort. And I want to emphasize that this is a rezoning effort. And the Georgia Park Neighborhood Association also recommends denial for three reasons. One is the character of the neighborhood, a second, infrastructure concerns, and a third, safety concerns. Um, as noted in the staff summary from your work meeting, the applicant's project is inconsistent with the well-established and stable single-family neighborhood, as shown by an R15 zoning that exists being transitioned to an RM zoning. This is a 70% owner-occupied neighborhood, which is comparable to several other neighborhoods that you're probably very familiar with. Uh, Newwood Valley is 36% rental, so it has even less owner-occupancy. Oldwood Valley, 27%, which is very close. Uh, and North Lake subdivision is 47% rental, so significantly higher rental and significantly lower owner-occupation. Um, the city's historical district is also very close. In recent years, a number of new owner occupants have moved into this neighborhood and renovated or built high value homes. Right on Terrace Boulevard, around the corner from subject property, is a home which is being renovated at this time by an officer from the police department and his family. Uh, within the last year, a couple from Athens has moved in and occupied what had previously been described as a blighted property and have poured tens of thousands of dollars into renovation as they downsized in order to join this neighborhood, which they were familiar with from their earlier residence in Valdosta. The result of this is a beautiful and stable neighborhood, which we are all happy to live in and would like to see continue as an R15 neighborhood. Our concern is that the non-incremental change from R15 zoning to RM zoning opens the density to 18 per acre living units. And while this is certainly the proposed development is attractive, there's no limitation on what an adjacent property that could then become R15 might become in the future. And this, in turn, would discourage owner occupancy during the continued transition to RM. Uh, furthermore, it, it's to be noted, sorry, I'll go back one, uh, in case the commissioners were not already aware of this, that if the uh, developer is not able to sell as individual units, they could, of course, be sold as a block to a secondary owner who could then use them as rental property without that going back to the commission nor to the neighbors. We do have concerns about infrastructure, though we recognize that staff said that they did not have those concerns. Um, it is an aging infrastructure in the neighborhood, and multi-bath residences means we increase geometrically that water usage and that sewer usage. Storm water is already a problem in the neighborhood. Here are some recent pictures. Uh, three of these were taken on Sunday after our 10 minutes of rain. And you can see that we have an accumulation of water. Now, granted, it did disappear because the sun came back out. The top right picture is the property taken from across the street, and you can see a little bit of rainwater there after 10 minutes of rain. By the way, that rainwater is accumulated on the across-the-street property that has stormwater retention pond on it. 
Uh, the driveway in the bottom right is the driveway of subject property, approximately where the storm water is being recommended, the storm water retention on site. Uh, and you can't see a puddle there, but that's because there was lots of pine debris in the driveway, which soaked up all the water that's all wet. Um, in addition to that, uh, just to note, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration statistics show that one inch of water over these 0.88 acres results in 24,200 gallons of storm water on those driveways and those parking spaces. Okay, I also want to point out the road surface here. We, we think this is an infrastructure issue and the slope. I think my videos are not playing. Is that correct? That's fine. Okay. Uh, you see Park Avenue, which is the next intersection uh, to the south, and um, then you see the surface on a, a street two blocks away. If you could see the video, you would see uh, filming down Terrace, and I do mean down Terrace. It is quite a slope down Terrace Boulevard. I don't know if you've been able to drive in those, those streets adjacent to subject property. Um, We have concerns about road safety as well. 24 additional vehicles turning into the local road off the arterial road. And there are two arterial road traffic lights very, very close to subject property, which could easily back up if you could please click on that arrow for me. Here's a Google map, so you can see subject property. There's a little marker there and the two traffic lights very close to subject property. The access is on Terrace Boulevard, which is north and west of subject property. Nevertheless, those cars would have to turn off Oak Street on Terrace Boulevard to access the property. So we're talking about a great increase in population density, potentially, not necessarily with this proposal. But you're being asked to vote tonight on rezoning. And we feel that rezoning in this case is spot zoning yes it is at the edge but it always begins with the edge just like the fraying on the hem of your garments begins with the edge and we know where that goes usually into the rag bag in my hands so we ask that you vote tonight to please preserve this r15 single family primarily owner-occupied neighborhood that is attracting and retaining young professionals, many of whom choose to rent in the rentals in the neighborhood until they can buy, and also that is attracting people who are downsizing and buying starter homes in the neighborhood and increasing their value. And also to preserve and protect against increased cost to the city that might be a result of the increased impact on infrastructure and public safety. Thank you for your attention. Mr. Virginia, questions for Mr. Mr. Brickman, thanks for coming forward. Just a real quick, uh, your, uh, I think you said Georgia Avenue neighbor, I think what you said, I'm not for sure. Is that, is that what you classified it? I'm sorry, I'm not did trying to understand your question. In Georgia Avenue Association, is that the way you classify it? Georgia Park. Uh, Georgia yes, Park. we have an LLC, Georgia Park Neighborhood Association. And I'm just, just curious for myself, what, what is the boundaries that you include in that from west to east to... Uh, that is available at, I'm sorry, can I call on the lady who has that boundary map? Ms. Golden or Ms. Stewart. Where would you find the boundary map for the LLC? I suppose I'm going to ask you, do you consider starting at Oak and going west? It does. It goes. I believe that the western boundary is Oak Street. The eastern boundary, yes. It's on Oak. The eastern boundary is Oak Street. Yes. Thank you, ma'am, very much. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor, please go forward at this time. Yes, I'm sorry. Apologize. A lot of information there.
I'm uh, Shane Wood. I'm the president of the Georgia Park Neighborhood Association. Uh, I live at 300 Georgia Avenue. I've, I've resided there since the year 2000. Um, we've worked very hard to try to preserve our neighborhood. Uh, Pam made a lot of good points, and I'm just going to go over a couple that I think are important. We do have over 50 active members that pay dues to the Georgia Park Neighborhood Association, just to let you know that. Um, so it's not just one or two of us. Uh, and I do represent those people. Um, and the problem with this is, is if you look at the map here, you have all R15 from Oak over all the way up to Georgia, Park, uh, sure across, you know, this is kind of the boundary we've set um, that we're going to fight for. Um, sure on the east side you have other zoning uh, you know other properties that are zoned differently. But the big problem here is if you rezone this piece of property again on our northeastern edge corner, okay, and, and like the other people emphasize, once you rezone it, you can't hold him to eight units. Okay? This is a rezoning. You know, he can get 15 units, or not him, but somebody else, okay? You rezone this, and then they buy the property next to it, or the two properties next to it, uh, or the one on the, on the southern board, or two on the southern board, and then they come rezone that. And it, it's like a cancer. You just, you, look, you've seen it on Bay Tree. Look at, look at all the way down Bay Tree. They went in and bought all those residential homes, and they just slowly chopped away. You've got new complexes going up there every, every month. Every year. Um, so that's really, you know, our, our big concern is that, you know, it just kind of kind of eats at it, just kind of chips away, just kind of builds and builds and builds. One of the oldest neighborhoods <coughs> in the city of Dallas. And like she said, it is, it is owned by property owners. We do live there. You know, we, we reside there. Uh, we enjoy our neighborhood. It's a quiet neighborhood, especially when college is out, it's quiet. Um, <laughs> the, uh, and the thing about it is, we look at the occupancy of BSU and their dorms, and they talk about all the mm -hmm. dorms, you know, space. You know, <clears throat> the dorms aren't even full of the BSU. There, I don't think there's a lot. So it's not a need for more rental properties in that area. Uh, we have enough rental properties, and we're trying to, you know, we're trying to change that trend uh, as we go along. But I, I just think it's a bad decision. Uh, we appreciate your support as a neighborhood association. I thank you for your time. Any questions, Any questions for a presenter? Oh, Ms. Roundtree? We spoke about the western uh, boundary. I'm sorry, the eastern boundary. What is your northern boundary? Well, I, I kind of mapped it in the house. It's, where, it's, it's Georgia Oak. goes down and it goes down to the park. We've okay. tried to incorporate around, like, is it, is it you, can, you consider Garza being the northern is, boundary? Does it go up north? No. It's, it's larger now. Is yes. We, recently, uh, the territory has expanded. And it includes um, Mac, Van, Mac, and. Be, be, be Alan line, man. Please stand. Please stand. I'm sorry. You, that's fine, just so we can hear you. I'm okay. sorry. Uh, within the last six months, we um, met and have voted to expand that area to include um, Howell Brook and Mac Drive to go down Gornto over uh, to Azalea, and then south Azalea back to College, and then back to Oak, and then back up Oak Street. It actually starts on Patterson at Georgia. You with me? And, and coming, going west, uh, and it takes, encompasses that north to Gornto. Okay. And then at Michael Terrace, it's exactly I actually, if I may, I think, uh, I, would, I think that needs to be discussed later on. Right. Thank it you, looks like there is overlap between what you're describing and the Brookwood North uh, no. established uh, community. Uh, I'm, 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 that's all right. That's all right. We, 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 we can make these. That's all right. Any more questions for Mr. Woods? Yeah. Any more questions for Mr. Woods? Well, I do have a point, Mr. Woods. I mean, if... I'm sorry, Wood. Um, given the fact that we have the ability to condition that property um, to eight, I mean, would that have any effect on your decision at all? Uh, yeah, I, I really don't because I think you're just setting the precedent. Once, once you approve that one, then the next one's going to come and buy a half acre, and we won't make, we won't make units, or we won't twelve units, or we uh, again, it's, you've set the precedent. Yeah. 
seen it on Bay Tree. Once that condition is imposed, my understanding, Matt, correct me if I'm wrong, but that condition would carry through to the next uh, owner of that property. Is that correct? The zoning rides with the property, not with the owner of the property. Okay. So once it's conditioned to eight units, then no more than eight units could ever be built there. I think what he's concerned about is future rezoning requests on other right, on other properties. properties. Right. Okay. Okay, I will allow, just for time's sake, at least one more speaking against. Please do not repeat what has been said. Thank you. I would really like to speak. Well, there's... I was, I was going to say I live on 405 Need your name, please, ma'am. Terry Neal. I live on 405 Terrace Boulevard. My concern is that little park down at the bottom where Terrace takes a little hook. Mm -hmm. There's two families right across the street from each other, young families and young children. We're talking a lot about oak. I'm worried about 24 cars that are going to dump out on mm -hmm. the boulevard and ruin the quiet of that street. We walk our dogs, kids play. There, like I said, there is a park down there at the end, so that's not a Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Please come forward, ma'am. I think this is fantastic. All these the people that are so concerned about this community, and I am a long-term resident of that community. The last time I was here, I told you stories back to the Girardins. I'm the second owner of my home that was built in 1949. And I told you stories about the Sunel pathway cutting through to the McClure's. I told you stories of, of Morris Smith, who was an author. I'm not going to repeat all those stories. But what I am going to tell you is this is an amazing community of people um, that care about the community. And yes, it is mixed. There are rental properties in there, but there are amazing homes and there are people that walk. We all communicate with each other. We form, the people that took the time to form this organization says how much they care about this community, which is historic. The original property was owned by the Newburns. And it was a farm, and the end of Valdosta Road was right there at Cornto. You may not know that. Um, maybe you do, and if you do, I apologize. <laughs> I'm not from here. I'm from as far north as you can get. If you go any further, you're in Canada. And I care very much about this neighborhood. I travel all over the country. I'm an artist, and I show work. And every place I go, I get one of these placards, and it says Valdosta, Georgia. Every single place I go. I've probably met your relatives, your friends, your former neighbors. People walk in to me all the time telling the Valdosta stories. So what you decide here tonight is important. And it's not about, it, it is about roads and watershed and slopes and all this, but it's about people and community. And when I go into other communities, I, I stay at other people's homes sometimes all over the country. There isn't that feeling that we have in our neighborhood. The yards are big, you know, we, we aren't necessarily <coughs> passing cookies back and forth over the fence, but it, there's a very unique aspect. And you said I couldn't repeat things, but I'm going to, because this is a precedence, and the further and further and further you in, come in, the more you destroy that unique aspect that you can't ever get back. Second thing I'm going to repeat is who is your buyer? Who's going to buy those townhouses? I don't think I certainly wouldn't. Um, I, I can't see who the potential buyer is other than an investor who wants to then rent them. So I said I wasn't going to tell you any more stories, but since I was here the last time, our neighbor McClure passed away. Mr. McClure was, I don't know, 94. And, um, Mrs. McClure was not far behind. They passed away within two weeks of each other. And the last time I stood before you, I called her up and I told them the stories that I told, because they were personal stories about them. And um, she laughed. And she told me one story. She said, you know, when you first moved in, your children came over to our house and knocked on the door 
and gave us a, a bouquet of flowers. And she said, oh, that's lovely. Are they from your yard? And my children said, no, they're from your yard. We picked them from your yard. <laughs> she loved that story. I was humiliated, but she loved the story. And you, you, you don't get connections like that. So you can, you can change the zoning, but you'll never get that back. Any questions for presenter? Thank you, ma'am. Okay, we are closing this portion of tonight's proceeding. Commissioner, any discussion on this before I ask for a motion? All stuff to sub in and comprehend. And
that's, that's, I just wanted to share my um, understanding of how that property, of what's, of what's being proposed, how that actually works within the state. Thank you, Mr. Plan. Any more discussion to make? <clears throat> there being no more discussion, at this time I will take a motion on this case, which is before us VA 2018-05. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Wells, I'd like to have a motion on this VA 2018-05 for this zoning request. And, uh, <coughs> my motion will be to... Um, find this inconsistent with the topics of planning and recommend denial. For the reasons largely that Commissioner Gladwin explained, uh, I think in this situation we have a very large contiguous block of properties where we have property owners who want to remain property owners and uh, homeowners and, and have the association and the uh, fellowship that they have in this neighborhood. And Looking at this one piece of property where it's going to be positioned kind of is the beginning of the intrusion as some people mentioned tonight to this neighborhood. Um, it appears that North Oak Street is a hard and fast line with the properties on the east having some very uses. And it is understandable why we have the situation we have down at this very busy intersection of Garden and, and Oak Street. But I think this clearly is a situation where you're changing the character of the neighborhood, and this is the first step in doing so. And, and you know, that's, um, as many pointed out, the Bay Creek Road situation. Uh, you know, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, when all those homes started selling to commercial uses, that was the beginning of what we see today, which is now a very heavily commercial area. So that's the rationale for my uh, recommendation for my motion. Thank you, Mr. Wiles, for the explanation. Okay, so we have a motion of denial from Commissioner Wiles. Do I have a second on that motion? Second. I have a second from Commissioner Ball. Any further discussion on the motion and the second? There being none, at this time I will take a vote by raising your hand. All in favor? Uh, Commissioner Wiles' denial of this case. Please see if I raise your hand. We have four in agreement. Oh, I'm sorry. We have five in agreement. Six in agreement. Thank you very much. All opposed to, and there's one, Ms. Deborah, it carries six one denial. Thank you, folks, for being here tonight. And a reminder that the City Council will take action on this April 5th. That's right. Thank you.